What is up, hockey card people? My name's Ryan. Today on Near Mint, I'm going to be ranking every NHL team into tiers, but based on not that team's past or current success, but more so on that team's hockey cards, considering things like how valuable their best players are, how many expensive hockey cards already exist for that team, how like hot the market is. So why am I ranking these teams? I'm gonna stir up some controversy maybe, a lot of fun. Also, I think it's like good to think critically about why a hockey card might be valuable. And I think the team a player is on, or the hockey card that their rookie jersey is, is extremely important and has a huge impact on that. So uh, I hope you enjoy the tier list today. If you do, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Of course, let me know where I'm completely wrong with this tier list as I go through it. I'm gonna share a link so that you can create your own tier list. And without further ado, let's find out if your team is an S tier team or an F tier team. Today we're going to be ranking all the NHL teams, not just the NHL team's logos. You're seeing players representing NHL teams as their Young Guns card. We're ranking the teams. I just wanted to use hockey cards as photos here for the tier system. If you haven't done a tier list yourself or you haven't seen a tier list show, we're gonna take every team and we're gonna rank them from S to F. S is superb or superior. You can think of it as like God tier. A, B, C, D is pretty self-explanatory, and F is where we're gonna put the teams that either don't want their cards or their cards aren't worth much. So let's get listing these teams by which team has the best hockey cards. So we'll start with the Anaheim Ducks, and we're represented by Getzlaff here. Great career, rookie card with the Ducks, and if you think of other Ducks players that have great rookie cards, there's Corey Perry. But as you go back in history, there's not like a ton of great, great players that, that were rookies for the Ducks and whose hockey cards became expensive. Getzlaff is kind of one of those best cards. If you look at the players today, you've got guys like Troy Terry. It's a few bucks. Um, but all their players kind of have just middling prices even guys like gibson I'm seeing in chat here like korea yeah great card but he was also kind of of that era where you know there's a lot of cards printed so it's not all that expensive so what do we think for the ducks i'm thinking it's it's got to be like d or maybe like it's almost like f tier i don't think it's f tier i feel like this is like a solid d tier they don't have that much going for them in the hockey card world. The, the market for Ducks cards is not crazy. You know, when you buy a brand new box and you're you're pulling cards and you see a Ducks rookie card, it's generally not that exciting unless it's like the best, best player in that draft crop. Zegris will be sick though. Yeah, Zegris is electrifying kind of that like surfer dude guy. When his rookie card comes out, I think there will be some clamor for it because he's got like the personality, you know, he's got a, a move named after him now, which, you know, that worked out pretty well for Svechnikov. Yeah, maybe there's like a, a good future in hockey cards for Anaheim. I think I'm gonna stick him in D tier. You let me know if I'm completely out to lunch on that. All right, let's do the Arizona Coyotes. I think you can see where they're going to land. I'm not gonna spend too much time on them. I think they're pretty, like, pretty obviously an F-tier team. You know, on the ice, they've never been very good. They've been average many times. Their best player is Shane Doan, really, who... So, you know, who's the best Arizona Coyotes rookie ever? I'm representing them by Clayton Keller right now, who is the guy that leads their team in points for guys that are on their club and were rookies there. But, you know, the best rookie ever to come out of there... I don't know, is it Ekman Larson? It's really not the hockey card market that you look at when you want to buy new cards. I'm really not stoked on Arizona cards. All right, let's do the Boston Bruins. Obviously, the the original six teams have like a massive advantage, massive fan bases. They've been around forever. They've had star players throughout their history. They've won more cups. It's not really fair. But I guess the whole point of this is like the hockey card market isn't fair either. You can have a talented player on the Bruins versus a talented player on the Arizona Coyotes. Same player, same everything. And that Bruins card is just going to be way more expensive because more people want it. I feel like they're at least an A tier. I'm thinking like maybe this is an S tier team, but they've got Bergeron. He's kind of like 
one era. They've got Pasternak, whose cards now are very sought after. Then you go back to arguably the second best rookie card that you can get, which is Sir Bobby Orr. That's what's kind of making me feel like maybe this is an S tier team. I'm kind of tempted to put them out up there and like maybe we'll bump them out if we decide a team later is like significantly better. But I think given their current players and their historic past, I'm, I'm not even naming so many guys that played for the Bruins. There's so many rookies that I that I could bring up. We're just focusing on, you know, or because it's or. I think this is a pretty fair place for the Boston Bruins. And uh, that's where we're going to leave them for now. All right, let's do Buffalo. Buffalo has been around for quite some time now. They've had some good years. They've never really had too many bona fide superstars. And even when they do get one like Eichel, he just leaves town a few years later. And so his rookie card is a Buffalo card, but he's not really a Buffalo player anymore. Kind of brings up the question, like, is that a Buffalo card? Kind of, you know, when someone retires, then I think the conversation is more about like what jersey they're in or what what team they played for the longest and had the most success with. But while he's active, I kind of consider Eichel a Vegas player now in a way. Like if you're buying Eichel, you're investing in Eichel as a Vegas Golden Knight. And so we're going to take Zemgis Gergensons here, who somehow leads the Sabres in points by players who were rookies there and are still on the team. So that kind of tells you how, how many guys they've shipped out of town. And uh, we're going to put the Sabres... Ooh, do I give them F tier? You know, guys like Dominic Hasek maybe put them up a tier. I don't know if I feel confident putting these guys up into C, though. Let's do something here. Buffalo Sabres RC. What's, like, the most expensive Buffalo Sabres? All right, so Jack Eichel's coming up, of course. They finally had their rookie card. They finally had their guy that maybe would take them out of the D tier, but they screwed it up. They screwed it up. I would have had more argument for them. That's it. They're staying, they're staying there. They're with the ducks. I think that's fair. Those are similar. I might even put the ducks a little higher. Carolina hurricanes. This is an interesting one. And this is where it becomes like, should I, should I lump them in with the Hartford whalers? I don't know. I don't know how much more that gets us. I guess that gets us uh Chris Pronger, which, which is a good name, but what they do have going for them is they have really good rookie cards now. And they've had a good team for a few years, and their cards actually do see significant prices. Just looking at my Svechnikov PSA 10 that I got back last week, and that's over a $300 card. So for that reason, I kind of want to put them in C tier. It's tough because they don't have the history, but the market right now is kind of bumping them up a little bit more for me. They've got Sebi Aho, who's amazing. Maybe they should stick in D. Ron Francis. Right, Ron Francis. Yes. So Ron Francis, I think, is the name that allows me to keep Sebastian Ajo and his Carolina Hurricanes in the C tier because he was a legend. He's a guy that not many people talk about, and like that's probably why he doesn't come to mind when I first think about it. But okay, that makes me feel more confident with this C tier rating. Let's go on to Columbus. Very similar to Arizona. I think you know before I even do it where they're going. They've got kind of nobody. Boone Jenner is the guy that's leading them in scoring that was a rookie there. And that kind of tells you all you need to know. Of course, Rick Nash played there. They've got a couple good goalies that actually their cards sell decently well right now in Merz Lickens and Corpus Salo. But for Columbus, yeah, everyone wants out. Everyone wants to leave. Nobody wants to be there. And unfortunately, there's not really a hockey card market either. Even if you get a good young player from there, it's not really moving easily. I think that's about it. They're an F tier team. Sorry, uh, Columbus fans out there. F tier. The Calgary Flames. They've got some good players, good cards right now. You know, they've got Goudreau. They've got Matthew Kachuk, whose cards move really well. The big one that, that I think of is Jerome Ginla, and those cards definitely sell. People love Ginla. Even I, as an Oilers fan, never really like hated Ginla. It was kind of like the Alfredson or the Lidstrom thing. Like He was just one of those guys that, for whatever reason, you could like even though they were the enemy. I feel like they're at least a C, and they might be a B. I don't know, let's drop them in C for now and 
Maybe we'll bump them up. I guess Theo Fleury should count for something. He would definitely be one of their better cards you can get from kind of the 90s era. Feels similar to Carolina where like their players now are good. Some of their top cards sell. They've got a few stars from back in the day. Oh, Neuendijk, that's a good one. So yeah, I feel like C is right. All right, we've got Patty Kane and the Chicago Blackhawks up next. Chicago obviously is another one of those teams that has a storied history. They've got good players right now and Patty Kane, Johnny Taze. Those are like kind of their older guys, but those cards sell really well. They're expensive. They're not easy to get your hands on, actually. I'm inclined to put them A tier. I don't think they're S tier. They don't have like that one, like, they don't have a Bobby Orr. They have Makita, obviously. That's, Makita's like probably their top guy. And he's obviously a legend. <laughs> Chicago drafted Orr. Yeah, but like, if he wasn't in the rookie card as a Chicago player, he kind of screwed up. Like, ah. <laughs> it's unfortunate. And you know what? If you'd kept Bobby Orr, S tier. Boston would probably be A tier. They might even not even be A tier. I feel like pretty confident Chicago's A tier. They've got a really good fan base. Their cards sell well. Some of their like newer rookies are actually pretty rough, like series one and two in 2020-21 had a lot of Hawks players, but none of them were any good. They're all $5 or cheaper. Ooh, Bobby Hall rookie, very important card. I actually went to the Toronto Card Expo in the fall, and that was kind of my first real exposure to a lot of these older cards. They have all the vintage stuff laid out for you to see, and you can go like team by team kind of and look at all the Gretzkys. You see guys like Bobby Hall, Gordie Howe, like just cards that like you don't see in your day to day life because you're not filthy rich and able to just buy every single rookie card of all the legends. We've got the Colorado Avalanche coming up next. This is like the hottest team right now. So if we were doing just like best teams to invest in for current players or current teams, this would probably be an S tier team. We've got McKinnon, Rantanen, Landeskog, Makar's cards have gone crazy. I guess those are the main four, but that's enough. But let's not leave them in S tier for very long because that's wild. But I think there's an argument to keep them in A tier because they've got such a good market right now. They've got guys in their past that were also incredible. I guess in this case, we also are lumping in uh, the Nordiques. You've got guys like Forsberg, you've got Sakic, you've got all these guys that were rookies for Quebec and then like very quickly moved over and started the Colorado era of, of dominance, really. And, you know, you could even give Patty Wall a little bit of, a little bit of kudos in this uh, conversation, even though, of course, his, his rookie card is in a Habs jersey. Forsberg rookie is Flyers. I just like think of him as a Colorado player. Does that take the Colorado Avalanche down a tier. I still think that's kind of where they belong. Maybe if you're looking at them compared to Chicago, it feels maybe a little lopsided. So you could like make the argument they're a B tier team. Let's do the Dallas Stars next. So the Dallas Stars, if you think about their current crop of players, their youngsters, you've got Gurianov, you've got Rupe Hints. Actually, I guess the big one that I'm just like not saying off the top is Miro Heiskanen, who I think is a very good defenseman, and maybe he's not at that Fox Makar level, but I feel like he's not getting as much hype lately. Uh, kind of since they went to the Stanley Cup final, since he was a very big piece of that. So they do have some nice young talent. Klingberg, although he's rumored in trade talks, so maybe that won't count in a couple weeks. So they've got that kind of era of new guys. And then they've got the era of Mike Madano. They've got Darian Hatcher kind of in that range. Marty Turco, great card. You know, that's the older guys. Then they've got guys like Jamie Benn. I was going to say Sagan, but he was Boston. They shipped him out real quick. I kind of feel like these guys belong in B. I don't know. Like, is it more similar to the Colorado situation where, you know, they've got stars now? like older stars now they've got a few younger stars but they're not like the same level as as colorado so it doesn't feel the same as colorado but they definitely feel better than 
Carolina and Calgary. Or maybe they're more like Carolina and Calgary. All those teams have good guys now. They've got a few good names from the past. Yeah, actually, I like that better. I like that better. I feel like we're going to end up with a fair number of C teams. All right, we've got Detroit. This is an interesting one. They've got some hype rookies. They've got guys like Zadina. They've got Larkin, who's pictured here who has been as good as he kind of could be on the team that he's been given the last few years. He scores some great goals and reminds us he's there once in a while. They've got Nick Lidstrom, obviously. I guess they've got Gordy Howe. He's pretty good. Is this kind of an A-tier situation? Yeah, Iserman was the one I was thinking of. Fedorov, Sawchuk, Lidstrom, Howe. Yeah, I, I think this is proper. You know, the Gordy Howe card is pretty incredible so like if someone did this tier list and they put them in s tier i wouldn't be like wouldn't be mad at them and when you compare them to colorado these three are, are tricky for me they're very kind of close but i think this is right Ooh, datsuk and zetterberg i completely forgot the era that i loved watching oh man maybe they are s tier lately they've kind of cooled off probably in hockey card land but yeah, you could, you could have a pretty sick Detroit hockey card collection. Ah, I'll leave them there. I'll leave them there. All right, I think you know what's happening with the Oilers. I'm just going to do it. Guilty as charged Oilers fan, but I don't know. Can you argue with me? It's it's tough to. I don't even I don't even know if I need to tell you why. But basically, you know, it's this guy here. It's McDavid. It's his pals, Dreisaitl, Nuge, all, all the young talent on the team now. But really more so, it's the great one. It's Wayne Gretzky, the most expensive card in hockey cards. They've got complimentary guys all around him. Messier, Curry, the list goes on. Paul Coffey, Fuhrer. I think it's pretty obvious. They definitely had a kind of a dark while, I would say, in the hockey card world where, you know, it kind of coincided with the 90s boom of hockey cards a little bit. You know, they had guys like Hemsky. Ugh. Jeez, I'm think I said Hemsky, and then I was like, who else did they even have in that era? They had Horkov. Yeah, yeah, like that era was tough for the like I was I was a, a diehard Oilers fan when they when they went to the Cup, and that was a devastating final series. But yeah, the the rookie cards for for some time there were not good, and that I guess kind of fixed itself when Eberle and Hall were around, but then they're gone. <laughs> <laughs> Yakupov minus five. <laughs> I think it's safe to say that this is an S tier team. Where should we put Huberdo and friends? Florida. My gut tells me they go here because right now, when you look at Florida, they've got Barkov, they've got Huberdo, and everybody wants those cards right now for sure. When I start thinking of who else Florida has, hmm. Yeah. So when you look them up, it's Huberdo, it's Barkov. Oh, I guess they've got Ekblad. He's no like superstar or anything but that's a good good rookie card that's kind of what they have and so maybe i actually move them down further the new guys are it all right i think that's fair i think that's fair they're kind of like an anaheim where there's a couple of big cards that you could go after and so i think d is fair they're definitely not f at least there's big cards uh the la kings anze kopitar obviously is their leading guy right now they've got dowdy who for some time was one of the best defensemen in the league, but has kind of fallen off a little bit. In the older territory, they've got guys like Dion. Was Dion Red Wings? Never mind, Dion was Red Wings. Whoops. Johnny Quick. Okay, that's good. They've got some guys that are kind of reaching the end of their career. They've got like the very, very new crop of rookies. They've got Velarde and Kaliev. And there's probably a couple more that are going to come out in the new series that could maybe bring them back. I guess they get some credit for having Gretzky there for a while. And there's probably some pretty cool Kings Gretzky cards. I think it's fair to put them with this crop of teams in the D tier. I don't think that they're an F tier team. F tier teams just have nothing. So they've got at least something. Okay, we'll move right along to the Minnesota Wild. So fun fact, Jared Spurgeon is their leading scorer for guys that were rookies with the team and are still with the team. I have a feeling that Kaprizov is going to change that statistic relatively quickly, but it's really like Spurgeon, like they had Suter for a while. The only reason I want to take them out of F tier is right now they've got Kaprizov. Without Kaprizov, they've got almost nothing. It's kind of a wasteland for hockey cards, but Kaprizov is 
a guy that I think kind of gets them out of out of trouble? Is that a hot take? I don't think I can put them F tier. Let's get on to a big one. Montreal Canadiens. Again, I think this one is somewhat straightforward. I'm gonna put them straight into S tier. The main reason, even without naming names, when I'm buying and selling hockey cards, it's, it's like easy, like 60 to 70% of them. They're coming from Quebec or going to Quebec. So people in Quebec who are mostly Habs fans are like crazy about hockey cards. But yeah, Carey Price, obviously great young guns. Lately, I guess the crop of young guns hasn't been as amazing. They have one of the best ones coming up, obviously, in Cole Caulfield, but their history of amazing hockey players and multi-cup winning hockey players speaks for itself. They get credit for Patty Waugh, which is a card I would love to have at some point. Uh, Rocket Richard, Vesna, he's got a award named after him, no big deal. Morenz, Joliet, Hainsworth, yeah, Henri, Henri Richard, Jeffrey on, geez, Harvey, uh, Dryden, Lef oh, Lafleur was one of my favorites for sure. Cornaille, Beliveau, Robinson, Watt, like it's so good that it almost makes me want to take Boston out of here, but I can't, I can't. Based on everything I just said, Montreal is an easy S tier. Okay, we've got the New Jersey Devils. Right now they've got some good cards. They've got Jack Hughes. Hiche is a guy that I really like, uh, Moosehead's guy. I still think he's gonna be, let's say better than his current career has shown. Currently, who else do they have? I'm gonna stick them in B tier for now. They have Marty Brodeur, who obviously one of the best goalies of all time. The thing with Brodeur is his cards aren't that, that expensive because they were printed at the like peak of hockey card printing. And so there's like Broder rookie cards in everybody's house around the world. And yeah, I'm seeing in chat Niedermeyer, Eliash, also kind of that era, like the best era of New Jersey is also the worst era as far as like value for hockey cards. It's a toughie. I think B is fair. I think it's fair. They've got a couple good guys right now. If you're selling New Jersey cards, they do sell. They do sell. Ty Smith is another guy I like, actually. I think he's kind of going to be a better defenseman than he has so far shown. And his cards, I think, have room to grow. So I think I think B tier. Oh, I'm tempted to even move them down to C. Is that more of like a Dallas situation? Compare like Medano to Brodeur. Yeah, you know what? I'm going to I'm going to bring them down. Maybe Colorado will be our only B tier team. Not all hockey card teams are made the same. We got Roman Yossi and the Nashville Predators. My instinct is to just put them straight into D and move on. Philip Forsberg, Roman Yossi, Kevin Fiala was a rookie there. If they didn't have a couple of really good players, maybe they'd be F tier. Oh, Rene's a good one. Rene's a good one. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Weber, I guess, would be. He's been with Montreal so long that it doesn't seem like he's an Asheville player, but he certainly was a very, very good player for them and obviously a rookie there too. Yeah, like when I think of Nashville, they're very similar to Minnesota in a lot of ways. We have the New York Islanders next. This is a tough one. They, like Tavares kind of counts because he was there for long enough. He was their captain. The market for Islanders players, though, I don't think is that good. I feel like we should put them with their New Jersey counterparts. They've got Barzal. That's a great card that everyone wants. So Islanders seats here. I guess they have like Trottier, Mike Bossy, right? That's probably their best one, like goal scorer. Yeah, and those are pretty pretty valuable from what I'm seeing. So that's a that's a great card to get. Bossy, Trottier, Smith. Oh yeah, Chara, Lafontaine. Yeah, that's a good one too. I think the the reason that they've earned their way into the C tier is on on the back of Bossy. That's like their card. Barzal and Bossy are kind of the two. It almost makes me wonder if they should be a little higher. Are they on par with Colorado, though? B tier? Are they better than, like, Medano and the current crew in Dallas? Who else does New York have right now? Josh Bailey cards are, like, kind of nothing. Barzal, Beauvillier. It's really the history. Sorokin. Ooh, that's actually a great one. You know what? That's a tiebreaker for me. They've They've got a top goalie prospect. His cards sell for a good amount. We'll put them in B. That feels weird to me, 
but we'll do it. Okay, let's go to the New York Rangers, their leading scorer for active players that were rookies there, Chris Kreider, who is also having an insane year. I'm curious here, what does a Chris Kreider Young Guns go for? Chris Kreider Young Guns, not, not free, not expensive. That's what I have to say about Chris Kreider. Anyways, that's a rabbit hole. We've got Brian Leach. I guess Gretzky was there for a hot second, as was Messier. So there's some like junk era cards from those guys. Now they've got Lafreniere, they've got Kako, they've got kind of this new group of rookies that are playing but aren't playing like superstars or even stars, really. They've got Panarin, who is not like their rookie card, but at least he's there. They've got Shesterkin. That's a card that sells for quite a bit right now because it's in SPA, not in Series 1 or 2. I'm missing some old players from the Rangers for sure. I, I missed the kind of like one of the most hype cards of recent history in Adam Fox. Adam Fox cards have gone crazy. I just got a PSA 10 back last week in the show that I did and its value is somewhere in the 650, 750 range Canadian. Lafreniere cards like still sell. Lunkvist, that's a great one. Gilbert, Rattel, Park, Kovalev. So yeah, they've got like great cards in history and they've got a good crop of guys right now. And the other thing that's important here is the market for hockey cards for Rangers is very high because, you know, it's one of the most popular teams. They've been around since the original six. On that alone, I could see us moving them up to A tier, but I don't know. They don't have that one card. Like they don't have, when you look at the A tier teams and the S tier teams, there's like one card in each of those that is like amazing. They don't have Gordie Howe. I, I'm not even really sure like what's the best Rangers rookie card that you could go buy right now. It's not Adam Fox, is it? They don't have a Mount Rushmore card. That's a funny way of putting it. Yeah, they just don't have that one guy. Okay, Ottawa Senators. This is like one that like has a place in my heart. I grew up in Ottawa. The team actually came to Ottawa very close to when I was born. So I kind of grew up with them and thankfully was too young to actually know what was going on in Ottawa's infancy because from everything that I've heard, it was an absolute tire fire. And so every rookie from back then is pretty much useless. A few years in, they started to get guys like Alexander Daig, Yashin. They had Alexi Yashin. Alfie was my favorite. I got a PSA 10 of his rookie back last week that I'm very excited to have. And then, you know, they started having some cards later in their actual good years. You know, they had Spezza. And then recently, Ottawa has really elevated their hockey card game quite a bit. They're doing quite well. I remember when Series 1 came out, Josh Norris was in it, and I didn't know very much about him. I didn't expect much from him. And all of a sudden, he's a card that people want. They've got Drake Batherson. Guys like Brandstrom even are starting to sell. And yeah, they've got Brady Kachuk, the guy that everybody loves or hates. Shabbat is a guy that I keep thinking is going to be better. And, you know, he's, he's still good, but I keep thinking he's going to be like one of the top D-men in the league and maybe he just needs the team around him. Stutzla cards are hot. As far as teams that haven't been around very long and hockey cards, Ottawa's done pretty damn well. And yeah, you're right. The Ottawa Senators cards sell. And I understand why. Coming from Ottawa, it was a hockey town growing up. Like they've they've diversified a little bit. They've got CFL football now. They've got a soccer team and and hockey's not like the only thing anymore, but it's still huge there. And so that kind of has like created this super fandom. And I do send a lot of cards to the Ottawa area when I'm selling cards. They don't have history. That's like the big strike against them. But if we started this in like 2000, if we're judging based on 2000, they've done pretty well. Like I'd say they're A or B if we started in 2000. With zero history to go on, I think it's C. I think they fit nicely with the, the Carolinas and the Calgarys. So I think that's fair. I'm actually surprised we've only got two F tier teams. I expected to put a couple more in the F tier. We've got the Philadelphia Flyers coming up next. A team that is breaking records. I feel bad even bringing it up, so I'm sorry, Philadelphia fans, but like win a game already. Giroux might 
be on the move. The GM said it's up to him. I mean, that would be sad to see. Giroud's been there forever. He's got so many points with them, and it seems like he should have more success. The Flyers have good rookies right now, or guys that I think are good rookies, but this year they're not doing anything. I have liked Frost for a while. Barabi cards went crazy last year. Konechny was playing great and now is kind of missing in action. I really like Couturier. His cards are great. Giroux cards actually aren't that expensive, but I do like them. Provorov, like they've got, like the list of guys that they have even just now on the team is wild. I don't know how they're a bad team every year. Carter Hart, and they also have, you know, a history of great players. Peter Forsberg was a Flyers rookie, technically, so they kind of get credit for him. Yeah, Clark. That's the one I was thinking. Clark. Hextall, obviously quite the character. Lindros. Isn't Lindros' rookie card something else? Or was he in a in a Canada jersey, so it kind of wasn't anything? Perrant. Yeah, yeah. Lindbergh. I don't know. They've got such a great crop right now. They have these pretty great players of the past, but I don't I don't think they're at the same level as like the great players of the past from Detroit or Chicago. And so I feel like they get stuck in the B tier. Now we've got the Pittsburgh Penguins. This is one where like, I think it's at least an A tier and we can talk about, is it S tier? They've obviously got Sidney Crosby as their poster boy of hockey cards. I think he's one of the top five hockey cards. Him with Yager, whose cards like did go up in price recently, even though he's a 90s card and, you know, there's lots of them out there. Lemieux, obviously, great, 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 great players. They've got Flurry, Latang would be them, right? The current crop of guys, you know, it's kind of like Gensel and then the rest. The current crop is not good because for a long time they've been just shipping out their prospects to try and win, but they don't have like hot rookies very often since you know they went and got Crosby and Malkin I don't know if I mentioned Malkin yet but he's pretty good too their cards sell well too but maybe not as well as Boston Edmonton Montreal I feel like Pittsburgh is like Sidney Crosby he would be the reason that they would get S tier doesn't seem as good as the teams that are up there I think I'm gonna leave them in A tier okay San Jose Sharks Brent Burns Couturier Pavelski's gone. Hurdle and Meyer, they're in the headlines. Who else? Oh, Marlowe, I guess, is a big one in Thornton. But other than that, Urbe. Yeah, Urbe's one from like the older days. These guys immediately seem like very Dallas Stars esque to me. They might be more like Anaheim because they don't have that like older crew of guys that were good. They really just have the guys that were good in the Thornton era. And then they've got some guys that are good now. Even then, they don't have very exciting new rookies. It's <laughs> Chichu. <laughs> hey, he scored 50 goals, did he not? I'm going to move them down. They're going to D tier. I just can't see why they'd be better than all these teams. Let's move along. St. Louis Blues. You know, Tarasenko here is the guy right now. I think the card that you'd want right now. Yeah, I guess Kairu has, has emerged as a card you'd really want right now. But the ones of the past, I think the big one is Brett Hall. That's a cool card, but it's also from that like era of cards that were kind of everywhere. I feel like these are a C tier team. Let's just do a quick St. Louis Blues RC search. Was Cujo St. Louis? Well, that's a good one. I mean, he's. I don't really know Cujo as a St. Louis Blue. Gretzky for a month. Yeah, how much does Gretzky for a month get you in the hockey card tier ranking? Spoiler alert, it doesn't get you that much. Jaden Schwartz. Oh, Jordan Bennington. That's a decent one. And actually, Huso. I sold a Huso card recently. He might be stealing Bennington's job. Who knows? Oh, do I even put them down one? Is Brett Hall enough to keep them here? Pietrangelo. He was a blue for a long time. This feels correct. I think they're a C tier team. Let's do Tampa Bay. And Tampa Bay has obviously been dominant of late. Their cards have gotten a lot of attention. Kucherov, Stamkos, Hedman, Vasilevsky, Braden Point. And then, you know, from the era where I was younger, Le Cavalier and St. Louis. If we want to talk about goalies, there's Manon Rayom, the only lady who has ever suited up in an NHL game. So that's something all on its own. I just dropped them in beats here right now. Yeah, I think like Kucherov and, and Stamkos... 
and Vasilevsky kind of do elevate them. Braden Point even a little bit now. Can we rank them high based on their current good players? The hockey card market down there is not great. The prices of those cards have really only gone up because they went back to back Stanley Cups. When I think about them from a hockey card perspective, it's just who they have now. It seems like a C tier team to me. They don't really have the, the historical greats. Okay, I feel, I feel good about Tampa and C though. All right, let's go to the Leafs. Feel bad like just putting them into S tier? Who would you say is the best Leafs rookie card of all time? Like right now, they've obviously got big cards. They've got Matthews, they've got Marner. Nylander's cards, I think, are still underpriced. Then, you know, they've got older guys, Tim Horton, Sill Apps. But do they have that one player that is like the card that you need? Oh, Frank Mahovlich. And Tim Horton, yeah, of course. Sittler and Lanny. Matt Sundin, obviously, when I was growing up, was like their whole team. Is the sum of all these enough to move them up to S tier? You know what might do it for me? Is the Toronto hockey card market is pretty nuts. When you're trying to sell a Leafs card, it's, it's pretty easy. You go to pretty much any building in the league, you're seeing Leafs fans. Would I be crazy to put them in S tier? Like, I, I didn't want to put this many teams in S tier. The hockey card market is kind of a bit of a tiebreaker for me. When I think about Toronto versus Chicago, Detroit, Pittsburgh, do they have a Sidney Crosby card? No. They have lots of cards that are kind of just below that. I think this is what I want to do. It's interesting that we've got three Canadian teams in there. That tells you something about the hockey card hobby. Who's buying and selling hockey cards? I don't send that many cards to the state. Hockey cards is really, really focused in Canada. And so that does give them a bump. Broda is a big vintage card. Broda? I've actually never seen this Broda card. That is really cool. I mean, obviously this is just listings, but 20k seems high. How cool is that? Look at this. What is this shape? What I'm what I'm assuming is, you know, if you didn't want it to get 10, 70 years later, if you could like pop it out and then that card would look 3D. So that's pretty cool. And probably why there's very, very few that are in perfect condition because how could you as a kid not pop that thing out? All right, so yeah, I think that really solidified the Leafs where they are. All right, let's go to the Vancouver Canucks. Vancouver Canucks is like the Sedins. Their cards aren't that expensive. I I still think the Sedins rookie cards should be a little, a little more expensive. I imagine they're going to get into the Hall of Fame. So then we've got Bure, Pavel Bure cards sell like crazy. Uh, they've got some big cards right now, even though the cards have been a little bit less in the lens of the hockey world because they're struggling a bit. I still love Pedersen and his cards. I've been a Besser fan. I think he's kind of like Nylander where like, if that team starts putting it together, he's gonna have big goal scoring years. I'm missing Quinn Hughes in this conversation who is one of the best defensemen in the league. Horvat leads their team in all-time scoring for guys that were rookies there and are still there. And his cards are actually quite expensive. I was surprised. So if you're looking at their cards, you know, they've got Hoaglander 2 on the new guys front. They've got Thatcher Demko. They've got a lot to be excited about now. It's a Canadian market, so there's lots of fans. People buy Vancouver cards. But I feel like they belong in B tier. Is that nuts? Yeah, okay. B tier is crazy. I just got a little excited. I think they're C tier. They fit better with these C tier teams. It's more like the modern teams that end up here. Was Cam Neely a rookie on the Canucks? You are so right. It's got those vintage triangle Canucks jerseys. And those are expensive. PSA 10s are not cheap that's a new ripple is cam neely a guy not really known as a canuck enough for me to bump them to the b tier i don't think so i'm leaving them where they are okay vegas golden knights i'm just gonna do this quick it's not really that fair they've got guys like Hag, and they used to have glass but they don't really have rookie cards yet. So they've got some patch cards of guys like Mark Stone and Pacioretty. Like, they've got some good players, but even those players, you know, Mark Stone cards aren't that expensive. They don't really have much going on for them yet, and it, it's not their fault. It's not their fault. Washington Capitals, should we just put them with Sid the Kid? Sid and Ovi are just a pair, and separating them would be wrong. Should that, is that my only argument? I think that's my only argument. Sid and Ovi just have to be together. Uh, in all seriousness, 
Ovi is on a tear. He really wants that Gretzky record, that goal scoring record. He's their poster boy. For Pittsburgh, you know, there's players you can talk about, but it's Crosby. For Washington, there's players you can talk about, but it's Ovechkin. Is there anyone else? Kuznetsov, Backstrom, Oli the goalie was one of my favorites to watch back in the day. He also had a great name. Hunter, Gartner, Stevens. Oh, Peter Bondra, that's a good one. But if Ovechkin wasn't there, they're probably a C tier. Because they don't have much else. Gartner worth noting. Let's look up the Gartner rookie card. Yeah, Mike Gartner rookie card, SGC 10, is that's solid. But it's not like these are thousands of dollars. And so Ovi takes them there. We've only got one team left. Winnipeg Jets. Winnipeg's weird because they had a team. They lost a team. They got their team back. Does Solani count for them? It's tough. I don't know how you want to sort this out, but Winnipeg Jets have... Wheeler, they've got Shifley, Kyle Connor, but Jets players, they don't see much value. Kind of opposite to all the other Canadian teams. I want to put them in the D tier. I could see arguments for moving them into the C tier. I think B would be crazy. The reason I put them down there is like that people just don't pay high values for Winnipeg Jets cards. And I don't understand why. When I first got into hockey cards, it confused me. One example, Hellebuck versus Vasilevsky. When you talk to hockey people, they're like, those are two of the best goalies in, in the league. But Hellebuck cards are still pretty cheap. You can go get one. Same is true for when you look at Shifley or Connor. Connor had great seasons. And yeah, his cards went up, but there's no high ceiling on Jets cards. If I even look up Winnipeg Jets RCs, Line, like, he doesn't play there anymore. I think that's my final word on it. That's kind of where it's going to be. And I apologize to Jets fans. So if this is our final list, Boston, I could see moving. The Islanders one still weirds me out for some reason, but I think it makes sense. But in general, I think this is a good list. And I'm very surprised. We only have three F tier teams, but those are our F tiers. A tiers in this hobby when you when you post one of these cards for sale in a group or on eBay you know it's gonna sell what do you guys think any adjustments this is a great list you like it you think I did well yeah it's interesting to look at this and say okay like if you're thinking about investing in hockey cards, you can look at these teams and go like okay these are the safe teams to buy cards from now it's a little bit of more nuanced than that some team you want to buy more heavily on their older players vintage cards it kind of gives you an idea of like where the hot cards are and obviously some of the top players are also highlighted here like Crosby Ovechkin but yeah this was a really cool exercise I think for me it kind of like does reflect what I've done in the hobby I haven't bought very many cards from any of the teams in the bottom two tiers. I've definitely got some like Ottawa, Vancouver stuff, but I guess those guys didn't get a higher tier because they don't have like the historical cards. That's not to say in the future that these teams don't get more hype, more card sales, more awesome cards. Like I think Kaprizov is like the perfect example of that. So it's not like one player can't break out of this mold. That is my tier list. If you want to make your own, I'd love if you would share it in the Discord, or you can tag me on social media at Near Mint Hockey. If you don't want to make your own, you can just let me know what's too high, what's too low, why you think I completely screwed up with Minnesota, or why Detroit should be an S tier team. I will be back soon to do another video. I'd love a subscribe on YouTube. And until then, go get them young guns, and go get those S tier young guns.